Hi beautiful people, my name is Bridget and welcome back to my channel. Hope you're having a great day. Today we are doing a video that might make people angry because people don't like when people talk crap on products, but you know what? You got to stress because not everything's great. So today I'm going to talk about disappointing products. A lot of these have been like hyped up for a certain reason or another and some of them I just haven't heard anything negative about even though I had a personal bad experience with. So that's what we're doing today. Of course these are my own personal opinions on these products. If they work for you that's great. I'm happy you didn't waste any money on it because nobody likes that. It's like always a disappointment when you spend money on something and it sucks. You know? So I'm happy for you but I didn't have the same experience and we can respect that around here because it's makeup it's not that serious and let's get started. Okay, real quick, I do want to give one little shout out to my shop, theopencrypt.com. I have a whole bunch of things up there, especially in time for the holidays. I do have a sale going on as well, so you can check it out. I'll leave the sale, everything, all the information down below. But theopencrypt.com, I have a bunch of things that I make, build, or just like start from scratch and everything. We have blankets, which are super silky soft for the holiday season. We have earrings like these, which are sensitive skin friendly. Some people like me allergic to nickel, so I have them sensitive skin friendly there. Sterling silver and nickel free hooks. So those are great stocking stuffers. Also have other things on my side as well, like candles and wax melts, which also make great stocking, stocking stuffers or just a really cute gift, especially for someone who likes alternative or spooky themes. I also have a couple like slight Christmas things out now. So if you want to check it out, I'll be appreciative of that. I'll leave a link down below. Let's get disappointing products. I know that's why you're here. I feel like I can't talk today. So apologies there, but let's get started out with the two things which are pricier. Everything up here is pretty pricey step two things which are more on the like cheaper end you know so the first thing was a new thing for me and it's ruined my face and I wiped my whole face off after I used it and I tried to use it mixed in today with another thing as well I just don't care for it but this brand's supposed to be high and advanced and everybody loves their stuff so this is from by Terry it is the Hydra Hyaluronic Hydra Powder so Hydra Powder this is colorless it's the white one this came in an Ipsy X which was $55 the retail price on this is pricey and the brand is high end and I don't see like negative reviews on this product at all online but this thing is so drying. I have dry skin. I'm wearing more of a luminous foundation today just you know for skincare benefits but I always powder my face and this one is super dry. I mix this in with the Milk Makeup Setting Powder which is very light, fluffy, better for like keeping your skin kind of dewy. I mixed a little bit of this in there to try to use it today since I used it by itself last time and just hated the white cast I got. It was like super dry, saw every line on my skin and it was just white. So I mixed it in with the tinted powder. I just don't care for it. I feel like it makes my skin look really dry. Not necessarily powdery, but it just sucks the life out of my foundation and concealer and everything. I just don't care for it. Like my skin looks okay today, but where I have the powder mixed in under my eyes, I feel like they've looked better. So not a fan of this whatsoever. Sure, the high-end fancy brand always sounds appealing. The word Hydra powder with hyaluronic acid in it sounds really good. But if you have dry skin, I wouldn't recommend it because like it doesn't even want to stick to my nose. I don't get it. It looks dry. It just, ugh, no. Next up, a really hyped product. This went viral on TikTok. It was sold out everywhere. And I just don't know why people love it so much. Maybe if you have oily skin, it'd be better for you. I don't know. But the shades don't match necessarily. Like, so if you do like the shade match, you know, like try to pick your shade and everything, they're a little bit off. They're a little bit lighter than you expect. But I just don't like how this sits on my face. It doesn't want to stick to my face. I just think it's very creasy, liney, and not my favorite in the world. This is the Good Apple Foundation from KBD Beauty. I've worn a few times. Again, the shades don't look perfect, like matching, so this shade is too light for me. I've still tried to wear it and like bronze it up. I just, every time I wear it, I hate my makeup for the day. There's something about it that wants to settle into lines. I, I have a full review of it. You want to check it out. It makes my skin look even drier than it is. And typically like, let's look at my foundation today, even though I feel like my skin's not great because of the powder. Look at the powder. It's set on my nose. But at least the rest of my face or my foundation is primarily looks fine for having dry skin. It's not like my skin is the problem. It's the foundation. I just don't know. I do like the little you can pick up on your sponge how much you want to use. I feel like it's a bacteria breeding ground though rather than a pump because you're actually getting the bacteria into the product. But I still like it. I like the clear packaging. It looks very clinical and cool. But for me, I don't see the skin benefits. It makes my skin look worse. And I don't know why I hide this up to hell because they saw it on a TikTok and look cute. I mean, that's why I bought it. And the good apple extract and everything sounded fun. It's not fun to wear. While we're on KVD, I do like a lot of their products. I really do. But I have another one on the list that had good reviews and I was like really into it. I was like, mm, this is gonna be so good. It looks so nice. 
online. And then I got in person and at first I was just like, I don't know if it really does anything for me. And the more I use it, the more I just dislike it. And this is the KVD Beauty Shake Primer, the high impact eyeshadow primer. So it looks like this. And at first I was like, okay, it's fine. It's fine. It's fine. But the more I try other eyelid primers and the more I just use concealer when I'm doing concealer and put it on my lid, it's a better eyelid primer than this. For me, I thought the packaging looked really cool and then you could shake it up and everything. It got all cloudy and cute. I like the button on the bottom. It's like a little rubber button to like pump out the product in it. It just doesn't do anything. It's a little bit more on the oily side, which is an issue I have with a lot of eyelid primers because you want a liquid eyelid primer, but it needs to be tacky afterwards. And this one doesn't. It just gives you an oil slicky kind of feel. Doesn't give you any of the tackiness you need to like stick your eyelid, your eyeshadow on like to adhere to your lid like a primer. It's just weird. It leaves more of a silicone feeling than a stickiness or an oiliness. It's kind of like a silicone, but you know, silicone makes things pill off your face. I haven't experienced anything bad happening with this primer, but it definitely is not the high impact. And for the price tag, there's so many other cheaper, affordable, better eyelid primers. Just use your foundation as your eyelid primer and it'll be, it'll perform better, you know? And that's free because you already have the foundation. Okay, so Going into other eyelid primer now, I have one other eyelid primer I just did not like. And this is from ColourPop. It's their newest eyelid primer. This is the Party Proof. It comes in three different shades. It comes in translucent, it comes in me uh, medium, and then like a deeper like honey kind of tone. The Party Proof thing, I like that it's a little wand. I like it. I like the wand. And it's just kind of a clear color. It rubs out clear. For me, it doesn't do anything. Again, it feels kind of silicone-y, silky, not quite as pilly, you know, but it doesn't leave a tackiness at all, and it just doesn't do anything. I feel like it's a little too oily, like a, a silicone-y, oily kind of feeling, more oily than the other one, and just doesn't do anything. So for me, it's kind of just a fail. It doesn't do anything. It just makes me waste time on my makeup routine. Next up, a very high-end product, and I've used a ton of it, so this is only half the product that I just no, because all the reviews on this thing say it can work for any skin tone. You can really just blur this out and make it work for any skin tone. This don't work for me no matter how many times I've tried. This is the Tasha Denona Bloom Blushing Glow Palette. I got this in an Ipsy, I think, or a Boxy Charm. Like maybe a Boxy Lux or something. It was in a subscription box. And I was like, oof, don't know about this. I've used these two powder shades, which are uncovered a lot. They're very beautiful, light, glowy blushes. But then everyone told me, these creams are magical. You'll love these creams. All the reviews online say that I would love these creams too. I do like the little cover. The cover is cute. But no matter how many times I've tried to like doop, a little swoop in there and make this color work for a blush for me, people are like, you can blur it out really. Just pick up a little, just a little bit and just put it on your cheeks. It don't work. It's still too dark for me. As this being like a universal blush tone, no freaking ma'am it does not and then I feel like if I had to work it in so much keep blending it out a million times it's gonna brush away my foundation and I'm not trying to do that and people will be like oh put it underneath a lightweight foundation I shouldn't have to change my whole makeup routine for a blush especially for this freaking price tag this thing's like 50 bucks or something probably more than that this side's okay but it's definitely not a glow it doesn't really give a glow it's just a kind of a hue so <laughs> No, I like the powders though. The powders are super nice. I just cannot get this color to look good on me. I've worn it like one time and thought like, oh, it looks okay. And then I looked in natural daylight and it was very obvious that I had scrubbed some red stuff on my cheeks and tried to blur it out. The next product hasn't necessarily been hyped up, but if you talk negatively about products from this brand, there's always some negativity along with it, you know? Because, yeah, people love defending Rihanna. And nothing's wrong with Rihanna. I think she's a nice person. Is she ever going to release music again, though? Because I feel like it's been 100 years. Um, just a side note, not to diss her or anything. I know she's a businesswoman now. But, like, she's known for being a musician. Now she doesn't do music. I don't know. It is. It's not my business. I don't care. But Fenty has some good products in there. They have some, some good stuff. And then this is not one of them. Again, a subscription box find. A lot of things, subscription boxes are bomb. I have so many that I love. And then sometimes we'll get some stuff that's like, this is, you know it was bad. So you put it in there. This is their eyeshadow little six pan eyeshadow palettes thing. This is the Snap Shadows, the Mix and Match eyeshadow. This is number seven, Cadet. This color scheme gives me life. I love the mustard. I love the browns. I love the white gold shimmery shade here. This is the palette color scheme and it's super cute. 
The eyeshadows are not though because they're very inconsistent. They're very patchy. They're not use they're not easy to use. I don't enjoy using them. And they're like they're one of those things where if you use the darker shades in it and you put it in your crease and you start blending, it kind of disappears on you. It doesn't really blend out. It just goes away. So I have issues with that. But you know, Fenty. So it's expensive too. It's not like it's cheap. It's not like it's a five dollar essence palette. Speaking of essence. We have an Essence product. Now this hasn't necessarily been hyped. It's a new thing, but I haven't heard anybody say anything bad about it. So this is one of their new mascaras. They always have a ton of them. They're Lash Princess. It's my mascara today. It's one of the most amazing mascaras for $4.99. Like the green one, definitely get the green one, the false lash effect. It's bomb. But some of their mascaras are not hits. And this is one of them. This is the new Hello Good Stuff Volume Mascara with Caring Coconut Oil. Coconut oil is good for certain things, not good for other things. This is one that just did not help at all. It says, I'm coconuts about your lashes. It's a volumizing mascara. But for me, it doesn't do anything. It kind of separates my bottom lashes with this little wand. But it doesn't really make them dark. It doesn't really give them volume. It doesn't really separate them enough to make this like that kind of deal. You know? So here is the wand. It's very narrow. For me, the formula is just dry. I feel like it has coconut oil in it, so you think it'd be wetter. But it's very dry. It's not easy to, you know, really... I guess if you want to layer on mascara, really get some thick, voluminous, nice black lashes. It doesn't really do that. It's very dry. Separate your lashes with a little wand, but it doesn't really darken them or lengthen them or give them volume or anything. So, fail. And lastly, we have something from Uoma Beauty. I love this brand. I think they have great products. I'm wearing their foundation today, actually. It's very beautiful. And it actually has, like, some good skincare benefits, too. Like, they have some good stuff in their Cleopatra ink liner. When you get a good one, it's good. But this palette, the Black Magic, in, um, it's, they have two Black Magic palettes. This one's the Savage one. The color scheme is cute, but the quality just doesn't perform well for me for the price tag. I feel like it doesn't have like 100% amazing reviews on it, but for the price tag, the reviews on it are pretty good for the quality to me. I don't know. They have another one that I feel like performed better. The other one that has more grungy colors and greens and yellows in it. For me, this one is just super lackluster and hard to blend and not like the most pigmented in the world. Also has like a lot of fine glitter that kind of makes everything messy, which is a certain kind of look in itself. But for me, when you only have like one really metallic shade and it's a silver, it kind of makes the rest of the palette look kind of redundant. So I'm not a fan of it. At all. Not at all. Not. I was like, I like, kind of like the color scheme. I kind of like the reds in there. But no, it doesn't really make it worth it. Anyways, you guys, that is it for today's video. Thank you so much for hanging out with me. I know I got a little sassy about these products, but sometimes I'm just super disappointed when I want something to be amazing and it just isn't, you know, but that's life. I'm here to tell you what I thought. If you disagree with anything, let me know down below. I'd love to know your experiences. And thank you guys so much for watching today's video. Have a great and safe day out there wherever you are. Bye. Have a good one.